Welcome to freemasonpodcast.com. The current series features selected articles from Mackey's Encyclopedia of Freemasonry. I am your host, Jeff Day, past master of Laurel Lodge No. 13, Ancient Free and Accepted Masons of Oregon, currently a member of McKinsey River Lodge No. 195, located in Eugene, Oregon. Today's subjects, Trowel and Trowel and Sword. Trowel an implement of operative masonry, which has been adopted by speculative Freemasons as the peculiar working tool of the master's degree. By this implement, and its use in operative masonry to spread the cement which binds all the parts of the building into one common mass, we are taught to spread the cement of affection and kindness, which unites all the members of the Masonic family, wheresoever dispersed over the globe, into one companionship of brotherly love. And an old custom in an Oxford Lodge, England, gave it prominence as a jewel, and as a symbol it goes back to the practice of the ancients. Today this implement is considered the appropriate working tool of a master mason, because in operative masonry, while the apprentice is engaged in preparing the rude materials, which require only the gauge and gavel to give them their proper shape, the fellow craft places them in their proper position by means of the plumb level and square. But the master mason alone, having examined their correctness and proved them true and trusty, secures them permanently in their place by spreading with the trowel the cement that irrevocably binds them together. The trowel has also been adopted as the jewel of the select master, but its uses in this degree are not symbolical. They are simply connected with the historical legend of the degree. Trowel and Sword when Nehemia received from Artaxerxes Longimanus the appointment of governor of Judea, and was permitted to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and to restore the city to its former fortified condition, he met with great opposition from the Persian satraps, or governors, who were envious of his favor with the king, and from the heathen inhabitants of Samaria, who were unwilling to see the city again resume its pristine importance. The former undertook to injure him with Artaxerxes by false reports of his seditious designs to restore the independent kingdom of Judea. The latter sought to obstruct the workmen of Nehemia in their labors, and openly attacked them. Nehemia took the most active measures to refute the insidious accusations of the first, and to repel the more open violence of the latter. Josephus says in his Antiquities, Book 11, Chapter 6, Section 8, that he gave orders that the builders should keep their ranks and have their armor on while they were building, and accordingly the mason had his sword on, as well as he that brought the materials for building. Zerubbabel had met with similar opposition from the Samaritans while rebuilding the temple, and although the events connected with Nehemiah's restoration of the walls occurred long after the completion of the second temple, yet the Freemasons have in the advanced degrees referred them to the time of Zerubbabel. Hence, in the fifteenth degree of the ancient and accepted Scottish rite, or the Knight of the East, which refers to the building of the Temple of Zerubbabel, we find this combination of the trowel and the sword adopted as a symbol. The old instructions of that degree say that Zerubbabel, being informed of the hostile intentions of the false brethren from Samaria, ordered that all the workmen should be armed with the trowel in one hand and the sword in the other, that while they worked with the one, they might be enabled to defend themselves with the other, and ever repulse the enemy if they should dare to present themselves. In reference to this idea, but not with chronological accuracy, the trowel and sword have been placed crosswise as symbols on the tracing board of the English royal arch. Dr. Oliver correctly interprets the symbol of the trowel and sword as signifying that, next to obedience to lawful authority, a manly and determined resistance to lawless violence is an essential part of social duty. If you wish to support this podcast, please share it with others and subscribe by visiting freemasonpodcast.com. Follow at Mason Podcast on Twitter or at Freemason Podcast on Facebook. You may also pledge Freemason Podcast on Patreon. Any amount, however small, is appreciated and allows us to continue producing episodes. Until next time, brethren, keep spreading the cement of brotherly love, relief, and truth.